Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. On Wednesday, an NYPD officer pled not guilty to killing an unarmed black man the day after New York Grand Jury made the rare and unusual move of indicting the officer, Peter Liang, in the fatal shooting of 28-year-old Akai Gurley. The officer was released without bail despite facing charges including manslaughter and assault, and he could face more than 15 years in prison if convicted. Now joining us from Plainfield, New Jersey is Glenn Ford. Glenn is the co-founder and executive editor of the Black Agenda Report. Thanks so much for joining us again, Glenn. Thank you for having me. So Glenn, let's start with your initial reaction to this news that this NYPD officer was indicted for killing an unarmed black man. Well, we're always surprised when a cop is indicted for killing a black person under any circumstances. Uh, the young cop shot Akai Gurley uh, on a darkened stairway in the Pink Homes, that's in uh, East New York, in Brooklyn. The victim uh, was simply walking with his girlfriend in into that same darkened stairwell uh, when the cop shot him. And he shot him for no good reason. And I say that again, for no good reason. And that's why New York's police commissioner, Bill Bratton, who is a champion of cops, uh, called the shooting an unfortunate accident and said that Akai Gurley, the victim, was totally innocent. The cop was a rookie. He'd only been on the force for 18 months, and he's an Asian-American. Uh, the cops were doing what they call vertical patrols. That's when they go to the top of the building and then work their way down. They do that so that they can uh, catch people without folks knowing that they're in the building. Uh, public housing tenants have sued the police repeatedly and sometimes with success, uh, charging that the police over-police the housing projects, uh, that people are stopped in housing projects at a rate of twice as much as folks who live in neighborhoods surrounding the housing projects, neighborhoods that are often high crime areas themselves. Uh, residents charge that they are forced to live in what uh, are really very tall uh, prisons and are given uh, tickets and stopped for trespassing, for being in their own buildings. But mainly the response has been pleasant surprise that a cop has been indicted for shooting the young man. Uh, uh, that's especially true after a uh, Staten Island grand jury refused to indict uh, the cop uh, who choked to death Eric Garner. Uh, some of the public does seem to feel sorry for the young police officer, uh, but there have been published reports uh, that while Akai Gurley uh, lay bleeding uh, to death, uh, the young cop and his older partner sent, spent six minutes texting. They were texting their union representatives, uh, presumably to see uh, what kind of exposure they might have for this killing. And you mentioned the killing of an unarmed black man in Staten Island. That, along with the killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, helped launch this Black Lives Matter uh, movement across the country. Do you think this officer would have been indicted if that movement had not spread and kind of caught fire around the nation over the past several months? Well, that would be totally speculation, but I consider it informed speculation. And uh, most folks in the movement uh, share my speculative conclusion that no, there would not have been uh, this kind of indictment, certainly not for manslaughter, possibly some kind of interdepartmental uh, chastisement, uh, but nothing this serious. Uh, the movement creates the environment for a little bit of justice uh, uh, to intervene sometimes, maybe. And of course, you know, they've raised the conversation of the killing of unarmed black men, which, you know, as uh, the report, um, you know, as, as the, the 28 Hours report put out, and that was several years ago now. Um, so, you know, that, that type of knowledge is common in the alternative movements, but they've succeeded in entering this into mainstream discussion and informing people that might be sitting on that grand jury. That's right. You know, uh, crimes that are committed with impunity uh, tend to fade into the background. After all, if there's not going to be any punishment for a crime, then 
maybe it's really not a crime at all. So when there is a hue and cry that impunity uh, cease, uh, we could expect uh, that more uh, of these crimes uh, will be uh, discovered. That is, the public will be more sensitive uh, to the atrocity. Well, Glenn Ford, we're going to leave it there, but we're going to keep following the story. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us at The Real News Network. Thank you.